This gameplay video is brought to you by very generous patron, Shuffles. Jadar vs Tura. With three lands in hand, a means of tutoring for anything we need, and we've got card draw as well, I think that's alright. Alright, and we draw in two deadly relics, so I feel alright about playing out the Hagramalling tapped here. And then draw into another land, our opponent just holds up blue mana, so could be about to counter our commander, but we'll go for this anyway. Can always go for a tutor next turn, and hopefully they don't counter that. Okay, it is a telling time they were holding up, so just some card draw. Just a tap land from our opponent, so we can start swinging in this turn. Draw into a Blood Artist, which is obviously really good with the zombie token. That having decayed, we'll obviously have it die. Um, yeah, so throw down a Swamp. We have seven cards in hand here, so I have to be careful getting down things like Dark Prophecy. But I suppose that will keep our hand full here. So I'll get down the Dark Prophecy, and we can start drawing cards here. Swing in for three points of damage. The zombie gains decayed, and then at the end of combat it will be sacrificed, and we'll lose a life and draw a card to the enchantment, which is going to keep our hand full. Like I said, getting to a sack outlet in the Phyrexian Tower, which puts us a step closer to the Grave Titan. And then we see a martial coup for just one mana, unfortunately. Our opponent did miss a land drop there, so the soldier token going to go in the way of a zombie token, apparently. Okay, Agadim's Awakening is some good reanimation for us. I'll probably hold on to that. Uh, let's just get as many swamps into play as possible in case we draw into extra play in our lens. Don't have any of the Cabal lands in this deck because it's supposed to be more of a low curve, fast paced deck. So before we play anything, we'll see what we draw into from the Decayed on the Zombie Token. Our opponent does decide to allow it to go through. Oh, and I just passed through. <laughs> That's annoying. Should have had the extra planar lens out here. Just accidentally passed through the turn. Um, okay, let's get rid of the Reckoner's Bargain. Alright, seeing a swift foot boots from our opponent now. Okay, and it's a Blood Gas now, so let's try and do this correctly this time. I'll play out the Phyrexian Tower. Sacrifice the Zombie Token. We'll draw as a card again. Gets us into the Ophiomancer. We'll tap down a Snow Swamp because extra planar lens, which we should have had out last turn. Is going to exile that tapped land. Alright, so that puts us on five mana. Let's throw down the Blood Artist. And we can get down Ophiomancer as well. Maybe tutor up. Yeah, something like Yeheni. Some kind of sack outlet at this point. Not going to swing in. Our 1-1 one, one Jadar towards the Soldier Token. We'll just pass the turn. Having rectified the last turn's blunder. At the beginning of our opponent's upkeep. We see a Snake Token enter the battlefield. Now seeing some more token in Sen's Enlistment. And we draw into a Tevish Sat, Doom of Fools. I'm thinking that we have to be drawing more cards than this in order to make land drops. Let's go through to combat first of all. Not particularly worried about losing our tokens, so we swing in with both of those. Our opponent decides to take the 3 damage. Still north of their 30 life. Not losing any life to the Dark Prophecy now at least, and we are draining our opponent to the Blood Artist. Obviously the Blood Artist negating the life loss of the Dark Prophecy. So we get into some more mana in the Solemn Simulacrum. Let's sacrifice the Snake Token to the Phyrexian Tower. That is some rampant card draw as the board stands now. And there we see an Urborg, not the worst. So let's make another land in Solemn Simulacrum. And then that leaves us with four mana at the moment. So do we want to Demonic Tutor now? I think that's alright. We can Demonic Tutor for a Sack Outlet here, maybe Spawning Pit, because that's going to be more difficult for our opponents to remove. And then we can play it this turn as well, so if they do wipe the board, we can at least have tokens left in play off the back of a Spawning Pit. And then Jadar makes another token at the end of the turn. Ophiomancer makes one at the beginning of our opponent's turn. So what we can do now is Sacrifice the Snake, assuming it doesn't block anything. And then another one will be made at the beginning of our combat. Alright, a Path to Exile going on to the Blood Artist, so we could take the ramp here, but yeah, maybe it's worth sacrificing the Blood Artist, not sure we have. don't think we have any reanimation actually, so... A token on the spawning pit could be useful, but I think I'll just take the ramp here while we have double mana. So we'll allow the Blood Artist to be exiled, and bring in another couple of mana off the back of a basic. 
Noteworthy, by the way, that Drake96 is a friend of the channel. Let me know in the chat that he um, that he watches. So, big thank you, Tim, for playing and for watching the content. Dark Prophecy triggers when we sacrifice the snake. Spawning Pit gets a counter on it. We've got a land for next turn now, which is really good. Want to hold on to the Agadim as long as possible. So, Ophiomancer now triggers during our upkeep because we don't control a snake. And there's another land for us, so just throw out the swamp here. And I think we're fine to just go straight through to combat, swing in with our two two twos. Our opponent's starting to chump. Uh, getting rid of the Solemn Simulacrum here is fine. We'll trade out their two creatures for our one. And we'll get a card draw here. Not only off the Solemn Simulacrum, but another card from the Dark Prophecy as well. So uh, definitely losing life to the Dark Prophecy here. Thanks to the Blood Artist going down. And then we see more card draw in the form of Black Market Connections. And then another mistake there. The Decay Trigger went on the stack there. I should have sacrificed the creature to the Spawning Pit. But we still draw a card at least. And it's a good one. Braid is a Nightmare. I think we can get down here. So we'll sacrifice the Snake to the Phyrexian Tower for some more mana. And again draw a card and lose a life. Gets us into more removal in Baleful Mastery. Play out the Braids. And then we'll get down Tevesh Sat, Doom of Fools. Alright, and there we see Mystic Reflection. So this Planeswalker is going to enter as a copy of the Soldier Token, unfortunately. Nothing we can do about that. So Tevesh Sat really being, uh, <laughs> really being nerfed there. So let's start really trying to throw some damage around at our opponent. We'll play out the Grave Titan here. And that enters successfully. So now with the triggers on the stack, I'm going to start concentrating on the uh, more... Intricate sides of the deck here. Braids goes on the stack first. We make a decayed zombie token. And then Braids resolves and we'll sacrifice uh, sacrifice the Tevish Sat here. Sometimes it matters that you get the decayed zombie first so that you can actually sacrifice it to the Braids. And we draw a land. We see a Jet Medallion in hand as well. So we'll just discard a couple of fetches. Memory Mystic now going to aim to start making even more tokens. Obviously this is a token v token deck. Not going to bother sacrificing the snake at the end of the turn here to the spawning pit. We can do it at the end of our turn after we've swung in with it. If it's still in play so yeah we'll just pass through to our turn here. And we draw into another swamp. No reason not to throw that down because they obviously tap for two mana. Um, let's get down the jet medallion and... Probably just go through to combat here. So we'll just swing in with everything apart from our two token generators. Ophiomancer and the Jadar can hold back. Grave Titan makes a couple more zombie tokens when it swings in. And our opponent slowed us down quite nicely by getting rid of the Blood Artist previously. Might be worth putting in a little bit of reanimation in this deck. It's the first time I've played it so yeah the finer details I need to wrap my head around here. Play it a few more times. So, uh, sacrificing the Decayed Zombie like I should have done previously, whilst the uh, Decayed Trigger is on the stack, draws us into Necropotence, which we certainly don't have much use for at the moment. So, let's just throw out the Black Market Connections. Might as well throw the Blood Artist into play as well, because we can easily draw more cards if we need to. Let's sacrifice the Snake at the end of our turn. Draws us into an Oubliette, which is reserved for our opponent's commander. Uh, yeah, we will leave it at that. Braids on the stack first again. And we'll sacrifice a tapped zombie to that. Takes us down to 28. There's a Grey Merchant of Asphodel. We'll be pretty good at this late stage in the game. Alright, and our opponent scoops there. Yeah, do appreciate him playing it out for that long because he didn't have the uh, best of luck with lands there. Couldn't even land his commander. And it's pretty much... Just a case of us getting into an aristocrat effect here. We'll try another game. Jadar versus Urza Chief Artificer with some fast mana. Maybe too fast with the extra play in our lens, but we can wipe the board if our opponent goes fast as well. That's looking pretty good. Could do with some card draw, but we are on the draw at least. And we draw into another land, which is good. And thanks to the mana crypt, we can get down a turn one Jadar. So play out our commander here. So we get a Decayed Zombie at the end of the turn and we can play the Champion of the Perished into that. You know, seeing a Baleful Strix from our opponent, we can swing into that with Decayed Zombies all day long. 
So there's an argument to be made for us just swinging into that straight away and not showing our opponent Champion of the Perished. Because then they're more likely to block with it. There is a costly plunder for us to do instead, so maybe get down the Swamp and the extra Planar Lens. And then we can cast costly plunder if they don't block the zombie. I think that's fine. We just have to pray that our opponent doesn't get rid of the extra Planar Lens, although it's not the end of the world if our opponent does that, so... Swing in with the Decayed Zombie. And they don't want to block, so we'll make sure to uh, take the damage or have our opponent take the damage first. And then with the Decayed Trigger on the stack, we will sacrifice it to a Costly Plunder, which replaces it with Morbid Opportunist and a Reassembling Skeleton. Our opponent just holding up double blue mana, so we have to assume that that is some kind of counter magic. Drawing into another land is really good. Um, yeah, I think we're fine at... Encouraging our opponent to counter the Champion of the Perish, that goes through pretty quickly, so we'll try and land Morbid Opportunist, we get both of those in, so going to start drawing more cards here. Swing into our opponent, and then at the end of combat it will sacrifice itself of course, which triggers the Morbid Opportunist and gets us into yet another land, so that's really good. We'll play out the Reassembling Skeleton as well. Obviously at the end of the turn we get another Decayed Zombie thanks to our commander, and... That bumps up Champion of the Perished up to a 2-2. Might actually be worth removing this at some point so that they can't hold us hostage the whole game. We are missing out on a decent chunk of damage next turn if we can't swing through that. We may well wipe the board here though. Seeing removal in the form of Vindicate onto our commander. We'll put that back in the command zone and recast it next turn most likely. Triggers Morbid Opportunist and draws us a Blood Ghast. And then we see a Dorothy Voidwalker, so yeah, get down our commander again here. And then we'll play out the Dorothy Voidwalker as well as the Prismatic Vista. Uh, probably get down Bloodgast at the end of the turn. Or do we want to just blow up the Baleful Strix here so that we're not holding back too much damage? We've got plenty of removal in the deck that we can hopefully draw into at some point, so yeah, I will go for Infernal Grasp on this thing. And with that successfully removed, we can turn in sideways with all of our creatures. Not worthy that, thanks to the Dorothy Voidwalker, we can play the Baleful Strix if we want to from our opponent's graveyard. And we draw a Victimize off the Morbid Opportunist at the end of the turn. Preordain from Urza now, scry two and draw. And then cracking and evolving wilds. Okay, drawing into a land again, need to start getting into Aristocrat effects or something like that here. We'll go through to combat again. Definitely benefiting from the Baleful Strix going down. Our opponent takes the damage and goes down to 19, so we do outrace them at this point. As long as they don't do anything. And there we see a Solemn Simulacrum is fine, so play that out. Obviously a basic is really good with an extra planar lens in play. And then we might as well throw out the Blood Ghast as well. We do have reanimation in hand. And the Champion of the Perished is up to a 4-4 now. Our opponent has 6 cards in hand, 5 mana available. Be pretty unlucky if we don't see a board wipe now up to 6 mana, so can afford the Commander. Very few artifacts in play though, just a Razor Tide Bridge. Instead deciding on a Shining Sphinx, so obviously going to start making Thopters to get in our way with that. So we need to finish them off as quickly as we can here and... Yeah... Doesn't get much better than a Skull Clamp, especially with a Fetch in hand and a Blood Ghast on the field. So uh, we'll get down the Skull Clamp straight away here. Might be able to draw ourselves into Aristocrat effects that can help finish off our opponent more quickly. So draw two from Skull Clamp, one from the Opportunist. And uh, there we see a Sack Outlet in Spawning Pit. Eaten Alive can go on the Solemn Simulacrum I suppose along with the um, Skull Clamp to destroy the Sharding Sphinx so yeah let's do that now so one mana to put Skull Clamp over there and then we'll play Eaten Alive sacrificing a creature point that at the Sharding Sphinx we'll draw three cards here one to the Solemn and two to the Clamp and there we see a Demonic Tutor so that can obviously take us into the answer that we need here so Throw down a Swamp, Blood Gas comes back, we will play Demonic Tutor, uh, that can just be a Blood Artist here I think, although maybe Woe Strider would be better, or the Enchantment version. Yeah, maybe Bastion of Remembrance would be a better idea. 
play the Spawning Pit as our sack outlet. And then four mana for Bastion of Remembrance and equipping the Skull Clamp. And the Skull Clamp can just go on to the Blood Guest here because we're not swinging in with it anyway and it will come back next turn. So draw two more cards, Bastion of Remembrance in typical aristocrat fashion, going to start draining our opponent now. And now we will turn in sideways at our opponent, see how much damage we can do. Could have put the Skull Clamp onto the Zombie Token, one to put an extra point of damage through and also to have it draw his cards when it dies here, but with a sack outlet we're not too worried about being able to draw cards with Skull Clamp, so our opponent goes down to five and here's where the sack outlet comes in handy. Sacrifice a token, drains our opponent down to four, and we just do this with all of our creatures until our opponent either scoops or goes down to zero life, so again, bit of a slower start from our opponent there. We'll try one more and see if we can get a more interactive game on the go. Up against a very strong Commander now, Zer, the Enchanter, and yeah, Mono Black. We don't stand to do too well against an Enchantress build, but we will try this one. We draw into a second land here, so it can be Swamp into our commander as usual, and if our opponent goes crazy with a bunch of creatures, which isn't likely in a Zer deck, then we can go for Damnation. But I'm thinking we go for Demonic Tutor into Skull Clamp over the next turn or two. Seeing some fast mana in the form of a Saw Ring from our opponent, so could see a turn 3 Zer the Enchanter. A turn 3 Zer the Enchanter with a Lightning Greaves attached. <laughs> We're trying into the extra planar lens again, so so uh, yeah, I think we have to hold off on that, unfortunately. Don't have any instant speed removal for the Zer either, so yeah, maybe just demonic tutor into skull clamp and relying on a board wipe will be the thing to do. Now, if we play the skull clamp here, we could have our opponent remove it next turn, so it's probably a good idea to just hold it in hand. We're going really, really slow here compared to our opponent's fast mana and. Yeah, I think the Sol Ring's going to be the end of us here, along with the Lightning Greaves. We're going much faster than we are. But if we can draw into enough small stuff to overpopulate the board and have our opponent not be able to get down enough removal into it, then we might be able to get round our opponent. Our opponent seemingly second-guessing whether or not to cast Zer the Enchanter, but decides on it anyway here. And then Zer, of course, flying through us, going to deal one point of commander damage, but more importantly, tutor up an enchantment. Going after a Phyrexian Arena, it could have been worse, our opponent's at 5 cards in hand. Alright, draw into a Swamp I'm not against, so... Uh, we could go for Demolition Field onto this, but they'd just fix their mana with uh, another White Source, so... Not much point in that, maybe should swap this out for a Strip Mine or something, considering it's more Cutthroat 1v1. Anyway, Skull Clamp being played and thrown onto the uh, uh, Zombie Token here before we swing him. And swinging for 4 points of damage on our opponent. So dealing the damage, the Decay Trigger goes on the stack. Going to draw too many cards to hold on to here by going for Reckoner's Bargain. But it gets us closer to um, any kind of answer that we might be able to make use of. So, yep, just getting into Bitter Blossom, couple of lands, and Tevesh Sat. So the more basics we get down, obviously the better extra planar lens is. We'll get rid of the Ancient Tomb here and we'll just hope that the Swamps, um, or more importantly the extra planar lens sticks so that the Swamps tap for double mana and they're effectively Ancient Tombs at that point. Seeing an Expedition map from our opponent. Okay, they've cast Curse of Volbosity, Enchanting Us, so whenever Zer the Enchanter attacks us they'll draw a card and obviously go into Tutor again. Our opponent searches up a Ristic Study now, I think they're going to have enough card draw so... <laughs> Probably not going to play into that. Urborg Tomb of Yorgmoth coming into play, so all of our lands will tap for black mana here. We've got five cards left in hand, and we see a Diabolic Intent, which I'll probably hold on to so that we can use it to finish off our opponent, likely with Aristocrat effects. Get down a land here, and I think it has to be the extra planar lens. We'll see if our opponent has Counter Magic held up for it. Ristic Study, we're just going to have to have them draw here. That comes down thankfully, so get rid of a tap land with it. 3 for 3 on drawing into extra planar lens in these games. So after that we'll throw the Skull Clamp onto the zombie again. We're likely going for the Bitter Blossom. This turn, ready for Tevish Sat and a decent Plum the Forbidden. 
So of course attacking with everything this will be 4 damage to our opponent and then at the end of the turn the usual decayed will trigger and upon resolution sacrifice and draw 2 to the skull clamp. We are opening ourselves up to some removal from our opponent but they didn't look all that eager to get rid of the skull clamp but maybe extra plane or lens will convince them. We'll get down the Bitter Blossom after drawing into a land and a Defile, which I don't think is going to be all that useful to us. Wanted to see what cards we drew into first. We had a mana floating from equipping the Skull Clamp before, so could have gone for Bitter Blossom and paid for the study. But I'm not all that interested in my opponent's hand being full here. As long as they don't make a bajillion mana, which yeah, they could do with certain lands available to them. So playing out a Thespian Stage can become a copy of any land in play. Then casting Brainstorm with 10 cards in hand. After that, down to 7 cards again, we see a Talisman of Progress. And after that, Zer casts Archon of Sun's Grace. This is whenever an enchantment enters, so Zer doesn't cast them, it does put them straight into play, and that does still trigger the Archon of Sun's Grace. So we're edging closer to board wipe territory here. Zer drawing a card with the curse, and then goes for the tutor which aims for Greater Auromancy. I mean, we've only got one means of removing enchantments in this deck, so maybe putting the big original Ugin in the deck would be a good idea, so that we can exile enchantments. Anyway, Archon of Sun's Grace eating a Defile would be a good idea, potentially. I'm not sure if going for a Damnation slows us down too much. Anyway, we go back round to our turn. They've just got uh, a single black piece of mana held up and seven cards in hand. Okay, and we draw it into a swamp, which still taps for double mana, so we've got five mana available to us after that. So I'm wondering if Damnation then hold up the Defile for the Xur would be a good idea now that we've got four swamps. Which means if we use the Demolition Field for the Defile, we've only got four mana left after a Damnation. So we draw more cards if we go Skull Clamp here, as opposed to Plumb the Forbidden. Uh, yeah, let's go Skull Clamp onto the Fairy Token. Gets us into more lands. Skull Clamp onto the Jadar. And another land along with Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Which might be worth a reanimate at some point. So maybe going for Diabolic Intent is fine here on the Zombie Token, seeing as how we're not really drawing into anything. Going to say no to the Rhystic Study again. And do we just go for the old Fateful in Bloodgast here? Because we've got a fetch and that can draw us a lot of cards with the Skull Clamp. Uh, yeah, I suppose that would be alright. I'd rather draw into cards than Tutor for a load of cards because obviously a Tutor is just one card traded out for another one. Whereas the Bloodgast Skull Clamp Landfall combination can get us into even more answers. So we'll go for Damnation. And feeding our opponent's cards yet again, just hoping that they don't get a lot of mana. Although I'm sure they can go Cabal Coffers with the Expedition map. I think we're fine to discard the Blood Guest here so that I don't have to hard cast it. That makes it more likely that we can do something after a Tevis Sat next turn. So get rid of Blood Guest, couple of Swamps, and yeah, that should be fine. We still get Landfall twice from the Polluted Delta next turn. So it's just a case of waiting for our opponent to recast the Xur at this point. Arcane Signet. So with two mana floating we see Xur the Enchanter come into play. No blue mana floating so I'm assuming that they don't have counter magic available to them. So in response to the equip we'll go for the Defile and get rid of that Xur. Do see an untapped planes enter play after that. So looks like they're able to cast something else here. Maybe just cracking the map. Nope, just deciding to go through to the end step there, so we see some lands discarded, including a Vesuva. And we draw into another fetch, so play out the Bloodstained Maya, we'll bring back the Bloodgast. So we'll try and get into some more spot removal for the Xur before it comes back into play again next turn. And seeing a Bastion of Remembrance along with a Viscerasia, so that's a combo on the go if we can actually get into creatures this game. Let's crack the fetch and get the blood gas back into play again. And still have one mana floating, so clamp the blood gas again. Okay, and draws us into Infernal Grasp. That's really good. Feed the Swarm, not going to be all that much use to us whilst the Greater Auromancy is in play. So we play Tevis Sat once again, not paying into the Rhystic Study and hoping that we can hurt their mana at some point. So let's make a couple of Thrall Tokens and kill off one of the Thrall Tokens with the floating mana. 
Draw two cards again. And alright, getting to an Urborg of our own. Which, if they tutor up the Cabal Coffers with this, I'll probably blow that up in response. Yeah, it all depends on what they do during their next turn cycle. Or hold up the Demolition Field, just in case. But it's looking like Infernal Grasp onto their commander. Now that we've got a sack outlet, I was looking at discarding Grey Merchant of Asphodel to reanimate it, but if we can hard cast it, get the um, ETB on that, then sacrifice it and reanimate it with Animate Dead, then we obviously get double the life drain there, so keeping that in hand. Get rid of some basics. The Feed the Swarm is pretty useless, and I think I will get rid of the Urborg here because we seem to be making basics quite nicely. There's a Saga into play now. Academy Rector now will allow yet more tutors for enchantments. That's an even scarier one though because it's literally any enchantment, omniscience and the like. And Lightning Greaves being thrown onto the Rector. I don't intend on using spot removal on that thing anyway. And following that up with the Necropotence. If they want to lose even more life it's fine with me. Like I keep saying during this game the card draw isn't the issue for them. Okay now Expedition Map being cracked so we'll see what they go for here. I assume it'll be a Cabal Coffers. It could be a Ceres Sanctum is probably a better land for them to go for. I think that's the one that taps for white per enchantment they control. If they do play out Cabal Coffers, they can tap it down here. Okay, it's Hall of Heliod's Generosity instead. Not sure what enchantment they're aiming to go after with that. Yeah, and that's one that I didn't want to see. The Aura of Silence. Uh, so, yeah, well, we'll go through to the end step. I'll probably use Demolition Field on the... Um, on the Urborg Tomb of Yorgmoth, just so that they can't make a copy of it in response during the next turn with the Thespian stage and then dump down the Cabal Coffers. Aura of Silence being sacrificed straight away, that goes on to the Skull Clamp. I mean, yeah, I'd rather it do that than stay in play, to be honest. Academy Rector swings in towards us so that they can get the card draw with Curse of Verbosity. I'm fine with that, I think. Aiming for the um, for the limit break on Tevish Sat will be good, even though we are quite a ways away from that. So let's get rid of their Urborg with the Demolition Field here, so that Cabal Coffers is much less of a threat. They do have way less black mana that way as well. Wouldn't have been able to play the Necropotence, for instance. They go for an untapped blue source, which could be counter magic, of course. We trigger the Blood Ghast, which isn't anywhere near as important now that the Skull Clamp has gone down. So we could go for Plum the Forbidden, sacrifice some tokens here to get card draw. Don't suppose that's the worst thing. So for two mana at instant speed we'll draw four cards and lose four life. Obviously Rhystic Study will continue to trigger over there, haven't paid for it a single time this game. Alright, we've got a couple of enchantments now, so now I'm starting to wonder if it's worth reanimating the... what is it called? Archon of Sun's Grace? Might be worth doing to get more tokens on the go. Okay, so drawing into Bastion of Remembrance, Meathook Massacre, a Land Village Rites, and a Grave Titan. Not sure how useful the Grave Titan is going to be against the Academy Rector. I'm sure they'll hold it back as a blocker. Discarding to Necropotence, they will exile a Karmic Justice, as well as a Snow Covered Swamp. We make a token at the beginning of the turn with the Bitter Blossom, and... Yeah, I think going for the Animate Dead first of all is fine. So down comes Archon of Sun's Grace from our opponent's graveyard. Uh, we'll just play out a Swamp here, get down the Blood Ghast. I don't think getting it down multiple times with the Polluted Delta is all that useful to us. So just throwing out the basic is fine. Trying to get my Devotion up as high as possible here for the Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Because I think that's one of our only outs here. So we'll play the Meat Hook Massacre for just two mana. No mana into X, so not using it as a board wipe, just an aristocrat effect. That is an enchantment, so Archon of Sun's Grace makes us a Pegasus token. That allows us into Bastion of Remembrance for three mana. We'll make us another Pegasus token, and it's another um, aristocrat effect as well. And we do have one mana floating thanks to the double mana, uh, this being an odd mana value, so... We'll get down the Viscera Seer as well as a Sack Outlet. Then we'll plus two on the Tevish Sat if we're aiming to 
take control of the commander, then we'll want as much loyalty on that as possible. We'll throw out the Arcane Signet here and I think use that mana to go for Village Rights. So that gets our first Aristocrat triggers on the go, which we're not ready to go off quite yet. We need to hope that there's no board wipe next turn. We are drawing our opponent a hell of a lot of cards. They'll be up to 13 in hand here. Seeing Liliana Dreadhorde General and a Murderous Rider. Yeah, actually, you can see the, uh, the difference between the um, the times here. I think this is a newer player, um, obviously playing a more casual Zer deck. Um, but I, I'm just getting my excuses in here because I think I could have just gone for Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Um, yeah, I could have gone for that twice, like I said originally, thanks to the Animate Dead. And then sacrificed everything to the Bastion of Remembrance and probably got our opponent this turn. But my brain kind of switched off waiting for my opponent, so... Yeah, in that case, we are just passing through to our opponent, going to go for the Infernal Grasp onto their commander as soon as they cast it and just hope that there's no board wipe here. Pretty sure I could have won this turn. I was just conscious of holding up Infernal Grasp as well, that's why I've held up the two mana, but yeah, tapping out into Grey Merchant twice would have been the better move, I think. As a saga goes up to the second level, so could get down some constructs here in response to that. We could just do it during the main phase. Our opponent is tapping down mana with this trigger still on the stack, so... This is what's making me assume that it's a newer player. Detention Sphere from our opponent. That can get rid of the Pegasus tokens. Probably goes for something more immediately threatening here. The Detention Sphere, as you would assume, goes at the Bastion of Remembrance. So, Meat Hook Massacre. It's whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So we've still got the means of draining our opponent by using a sack outlet. Alright, so in response I am going to uh, sacrifice some creatures here just so that we can deal the maximum amount of aristocrat damage to our opponent. We'll just get rid of a few of the tokens here I think, so that we don't ruin our devotion to black. I land on the top, we will scry to the bottom, likely going to use Polluted Delta to get the Blood Artist or the Blood Gassed out multiple times here. Speaking of which, we can sacrifice it because we just get it out for free next turn. Scry Spawning Pit onto the top is fine, I think, just in case they get rid of a Sack Outlet here. Just in case they get rid of the Viscerous here. Yeah, we get them down to 11 with that, so definitely could have got them last turn with the Grey Merchant of Asphodel, but... See what our opponent does here. Yep, there we go, a Supreme Verdict, so... Being punished for not going for the win last turn. And just a case of hoping that they don't get Omniscience down into a win off the Academy Rector. We do have a sack outlet left on top at least. So some creatures die and the uh, Meat Hook Massacre is going to gain us some life and lose our opponent some more. Casting Phyrexian on life after that, so that just made things more difficult. It's not worthy that with this in play we do have to deal damage to our opponent and Grey Merchant of Asphodel is loss of life, so... Yeah, might be reliant on Grave Titan after all. I do appreciate that they didn't shoot her for something absolutely broken and that this is actually a fun Zer list. Obviously against a more powerful Zer list we probably would have lost like 8 turns ago. Discarding to hand size, um, a land that they just tutored for, Hall of Heliod's Generosity. There's an Angel's Grace as well which, yeah they're obviously more reliant on the Phyrexian Unlife now. Might have been a good idea to hold on to this regardless but anyway, those will get exiled to the Necropotence. Okay, so obviously drawing to the spawning pit, I'll, um, I don't even remember if I had a game plan now. <laughs> like I say, I'm switching off on my opponent's turn because it is taking quite a while. So blood gas back into play. Um, let's get down, we definitely want the spawning pit. So uh, let's throw that down first. And it doesn't come up often, but blood gas does have haste here, which is noteworthy because our opponent has less than 10 life. Um, let's go for the uh, Grave Titan as well, because it is damage that we're going to have to be dealing to our opponent. Then I'd like to get down Liliana Dreadhorde General, but I don't think it does that much for us here. We can start drawing cards with the Blood Ghast. I think I'd rather just get down the Grey Merchant of Asphodel, drain my opponent, and then start dealing the damage with the Blood Ghast this turn. So the Asphodel comes down, our opponent goes down to minus three, 
So now we have to deal 10 damage to them in order to give them 10 infect counters. So we'll start that off with the blood ghast. It's not worthy that we're up to 43 life as well. So for all the stuff that our opponent's doing, they're not actually winning. Not to say that they're not going to win, of course. Um, activate the Tevish Sat so that we can steal their commander away from them next turn, potentially. And yeah, Spawning Pit, a pretty good draw for us because if they do wipe the board, we can sacrifice all this stuff and make a bunch of Spawning Pit tokens, which are two twos, and hopefully go wide on our opponent. Obviously, for every two creatures that we sacrifice, we'll be able to pay one and get a two two back. The Phyrexian Arena has absolutely no downside at this point. So playing that Cabal Coffers, so surprised that he didn't go for it previously, especially if he was just going to discard Hall of Heliod's Generosity. So the Enchanter into play again, we've got removal held up for it. So in response to the equip, it is Infernal Grasp. We'll destroy the Zert and lose two life if Magic Online wants to actually do it. So casting Infernal Grasp, targeting that. Alright, and that has our opponent scoop. So obviously next turn we just turn in sideways with all of our creatures and we get them on 10 Infect. So should have won a turn or two sooner there. But uh, yeah, just lost concentration unfortunately. So hopefully you all enjoyed these games of Jadar anyway. Didn't see much of Jadar during that game. But it is a really fun 1v1 commander. And one that I used to play on Magic Arena. Until, well, Magic Arena went downhill. Like I said, hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to consider donating on Patreon. And or leaving a like on the video helps with YouTube's algorithms as well. So you can do that if you don't want to support financially. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.